we're joined once again by John Stevens, who is a horticulturist at OSU's Landscape Services. And I approached him a couple of months ago about designing a barn quilt for our garden shed. Barn quilts are becoming quite popular these days. And John, you just happen to be the guy that kind of knows how to make these for me, right? <laughs> and I have to tell you, it has turned out absolutely beautiful. Uh, I approached you a couple of months ago about a, a design. And you told me, no, that's too complicated. <laughs> so we settled on this design. What is it about this design, John, that was a little more pleasing to you or acceptable versus the other one? <laughs> well, Casey, this is a nine patch pattern mm -hmm. that has half square triangles and just squares. And it's, it's on point here and all the points just radiate off, off that center point. So it was a lot more, it was a lot easier to manage than the one that you showed me. It had that, a few more straight lines in <laughs> yes, it. Yes, a few more straight lines. <laughs> but if, if you want to, to get that complicated with your barn quilt, it's, you can. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like to use um, applique, which would be like an animal print or oh, okay. maybe uh, a windmill. It just depends on the person building it, how creative they are, how, how much they want to invest in time and and working on this and how experienced they are too you now you've made a couple of these i kind of came to you knowing that you had, had built a few barn quilts so, yes um, but this is one of your more intricate patterns it is right? this is this is one of the more intricate ones for a beginner i definitely recommend just sticking to the basic just half square triangles and and squares okay. and and going from there okay so the colors we chose were kind of based off of some of the colors we had seen um, but a lot of times you can get inspiration from different areas, your garden, your shed, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of aspects to look at. Sure, sure. So what did we have to think about with the proportion? I know you came out and measured our, our shed. Um, and this is, what is, are the measurements again on this one? This is 30 inches by 30 inches. Okay. And we chose this, these dimensions just because it just looked proportionate to our shed that we're doing. Okay. A lot of people, they may have a big barn that's been in their family for years, and it may be a full sheet of plywood that you're using. to. Right. Be, like I said, this depends on how creative you want to be and how much you want to invest into Okay. The quilt. All right. So we wanted this to be low maintenance. We want to be able to hang it up and kind of leave it throughout the season. So mm -hmm. there's a couple of things we had to think about that in the process. Yes, definitely in Oklahoma, we have all kinds of weather and we have to deal with the wind. It's in our, it's in our state song <laughs> and, and we have the uh, heat, mm -hmm. this the intense summers and just constantly beating on on the um, quilt itself. So we will need to talk about the you know, materials that we get. So John, what are some of the first things we need to consider? Well, Casey, after we have settled on our pattern, mm -hmm. I recommend getting some graph paper and drawing the, uh, your design out on the graph paper. Because uh -huh. if you can draw it on the paper, then you uh, can transfer it onto, onto the wood. And you don't want to make mistakes on your wood once you have it all, all laid out. You want to have have a, a good idea what you're getting into with your angles. When so you've you got your scale kind of drawn mm -hmm. out on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And so what kind of wood are we using? I mean, is this just regular plywood or it's thick? <laughs> well, that was by design. First off, this plywood is actually form ply plywood. Um, okay. It's like what construction workers use for pouring cement forms. It has, what's different about it is it has a smoother edge. It's, it's square. Um, so you didn't sand this or no, anything? Okay, because no, it is really smooth. Yeah, it comes just like that. You'll be happy with it when you get it. Um, our application that we're doing today is actually two pieces of plywood put together. And that was just our preference. Um, you know, just give it a little more bulk. Yeah, okay. if I had a quilt, I'd want a nice thick quilt too. So why not my barn okay. wanting one too? Okay. So we All chose right. that. So John, if this is double ply, how did you actually attach those two pieces together? Because I'm not seeing any screw holes sure. or anything. Sure. Like well, on the back side, we first off we put glue, carpenter's okay. glue, okay. all over it, and then put the two pieces together by having screws spaced out about six inches apart all the way across okay. The, okay. the back of the board. So the screws are on the back mm -hmm. side, so, you so they're won't not see seen. Mm -hmm. You don't have any texture problems or anything mm -hmm. like that with the paint. Okay, excellent. So the next thing we got to do is start drawing our design on yes here? yes you want to draw you want to draw your design out first uh, onto the with pencil okay. uh, on onto the plywood first and i recommend using um 
a metal a ruler straight edge of some kind. I like the metal ones just because they don't have, you'll have a, a more truer line. Yeah, you, and a you, long one too, A long right? one, you, <laughs> so it needs to be a long one. Yes. Yeah. Or you can use a T-square, okay. just whatever you have lying around. Okay. Um, and then once you have, have the design pattern all drawn out, mm -hmm. you want to then take your masking tape and start uh, sectioning off the, okay. the pieces, the triangles. Okay. All right. So you do that based off of which color you're going to paint first? Yes. Or it, and you only start with one color? Is that what you try I to recommend, do? I, I recommend starting with one color and just have patience. Okay. If you, the more colors you have, the more patience you're going to need because okay. you'll want to paint each triangle, each section, and let it thoroughly dry. And then you may have to come back and reapply another coat okay. down the road. In so. case you pull that tape and it kind of... <laughs> in case, yeah, in case you have some, some streaks, okay. which Excellent. it happens. Excellent. So, John, after we've used the exterior paint, we've got it all laid out and, and painted. Is there any sort of covering we need to put on to protect that paint or, I mean, a, a gloss or anything else? For the, coat? For the final, final finished product that we need to do, you want to put a clear coat in. Okay. And then that too can be a gloss or a matte, just whatever your preference is. So that just kind of seals it then? It seals it, yes. And just one more layer of protection. You, know, you already have your exterior paint that's made for outside, but if you put the clear coat on it, just be one more layer of protection. Okay. It. And I know as we've talked through this, it sounds pretty straightforward and simple, but obviously I would imagine the more colors and the, and it takes a while to it draw does. out your design. The one I built for you took two weeks okay. to build from start to finish. Okay. And it so was the a more lot of colors patience. you have, the more you have to wait between drawing yes. and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. as well. Excellent. Okay, so two weeks for that design. And so now we're at the point that we can hang it. How are we going to go about hanging that? Well, we're going to put a blanket on the table so we okay. can flip it over. We don't want to damage our pattern. And then we are going to uh, put the hardware on the back of the, okay. of the quilt. All right. All right, John, so I, I want orange on top. <laughs> so we need to mount it, I guess, up here? Is we that do. We need to flip it over. Side? Okay. And we decided that <clears throat> we're going to mount our barn quilt where it's like a diamond shape. So we're going to stick it in the corner. In the corner, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we, we chose these. Uh, we're using a clamp bracket to, to mount it because, of, like I said, the Oklahoma wind. Right. Um, you want, and it also helps with people with theft. You don't want someone to just come up and grab your barn quilt okay. and, and at least make it challenging for yeah. them. So we're going to mount this in the corner. You want to check to make sure that it's hidden behind the quilt. You don't want the silver stuff exposed. Okay. So we're going to mount it right here. And our shed is ready for a quilt. John, it looks fantastic. And I have to say, it takes on a whole different look being up on the barn. Tell me a little bit about how you secured it up there for us. Well, Casey, when we got to this point right here, you want to make sure that you're um, attaching your hardware to a stud and not just uh, not just thin sheets of uh, plywood or uh, siding. Yeah, and, and we, our stud wasn't lined up right there, so you went in and... Yeah, we added a 2 by 4 and okay. just connected it to the to the two studs that were in okay. the walls already. Right. And then uh, just measure twice, and so we're only drilling one hole in the, <laughs> in the side of the building. And, right, right. And then when we did that, we didn't do it on this application because we don't think there'll be that much wind movement in here, but if you're out in the open, you want to maybe put a small tack nail at the bottom of the quilt to keep it from swaying and okay. just um, it, it, it would be a really strong Oklahoma wind that would do that. Okay. But, but we're kind of protected here amongst the trees and yes. everything. Mm -hmm. So what did you attach to the barn then in order for us to hook that hook onto the barn? Uh, it was just a U, U hook that we just got at the hardware store. Okay. So just, just another mm -hmm. U hook that you attached mm -hmm. to the barn and then we were able to clip the barn quilt on there. Yep. Excellent. Well, it looks fabulous, John. You did great work, and, and I definitely think it has added another level to our garden shed. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Okay.